The purpose of this video is to provide you with an example of how to calculate travel time. In this example, you'll learn how to calculate travel time using the velocity method, SCS method, and sheet flow method for a watershed that is made up of four different land usages and areas. In each one of these sites, locations 1, 2, 3, and 4, you're provided a slope, a length, and a land use. The site is located in the mountainous area of Orange County and the local drainage policy states to design for a 25-year storm. So let's first use the velocity method. The velocity method tells you to find the total travel time, sum the quantity of the length divided by the velocity, where the velocity is determined as a constant k times the slope to the one-half. To find the value of k, please refer to the learning management system where I've provided you a handout showing you the roughnesses. What you'll notice is that there is descriptions such as forest or light underbrush and that has a K value of one. There's one for rangelands, it has a K value of 1.3. Open space, 1.8. Open space is short grasses and then the paved gutters, 42.4. Based on that, we can calculate the total travel time, and we determine it by summing the length divided by the k slope to the one-half for each of the land usages, and we get 6,640 6, seconds, which is equivalent to 111 minutes. Realize that travel time is usually reported in minutes or hours, not in seconds. The next method is the SCS method. The SCS method requires us to look up the curve numbers. The curve numbers are from a curve number table. We assume a soil type of C since we're not given a soil type. And since we're doing a 25 year storm, it's an antecedent moisture content of two. If I had requested a 100 year storm, you would have had to convert each of those CN values to a 100 year value. Next, we are going to do the summation of the travel time, which in the SCS method, they call it the time of concentration, based on the equation provided. This is the SCS method. Remember, the SCS method was developed by the Soil Conservation Service. It is ideally used in rural forested areas or agricultural areas. And therefore, we're in Orange County and might not be the most appropriate method. So after we find the CN numbers, we plug it into the equation, realizing you find the time associated with each location and summing it, and we'll get a total travel time of 54 minutes. So why did the velocity method give us 111 and the SCS method give us 54? Realize that the SCS method is, again, agricultural, rural areas with very little development. The third method that we're going to talk about is the sheet flow method. The sheet flow method requires us to look up the roughness value n. It is from the same table that we use to find the k values in velocity. If you look up the n values, you will determine, determine, determine them to be 0 0.4, 0 0.13, 0 0.15, and 0 0.012 respectively for each of the four areas. Next, we look up the equation for sheet flow. We're going to pull out the I, because remember, the intensity of rainfall that is falling on your watershed must be constant. Each subarea cannot have a different rainfall when calculating the travel time. We then pull out the Orange County mountainous area. This is very important. This is in your handout, so please be aware that you pick intensity and mountainous. We have to have a starting point, so we are going to assume a travel time of 110. The reason I'm assuming 110 is because based on the velocity method, we determined that the time of concentration was 110. We use the graph and we find its corresponding intensity, and we determine it to be 1.2. We plug it into the equation, 
realizing that we have to account for each of the sub areas and we get a travel time of 127. 127 is not 110. It's really hard to look up 127 on the IDF curve for Orange County. Therefore, I'm gonna assume 130. If I assume 130, I get an I value of about 1.15 inches per hour. I'm going to calculate its travel time based on 0.938 divided by the intensity to the 2 fifths power and the constant that we determine based on the length, slope, and roughness. The result is a travel time of 130 minutes. This matches, so we're in good shape. Each method is different, but please note the velocity and sheet flow method results in very similar answers. And this occurs because the sheet flow method has a little higher degree of accuracy from how it accounts for the location using the intensity. However, in Southern California, the velocity method is used quite often. Hopefully this example will help you as you practice more.